Moshi Moshi, my gamers, and welcome back to Genshi Impact. The Mass of the Night Winds are unique amongst the tribe of Nathan, having mastered all kinds of genius methods of communicating with the world. In this adventure, but curiously, perhaps you will be able to draw back the corners of the Tzotin. Or ask request for help. Ether, I know this is a bit out of blue, but I want the tricky story and read your help. If it happens to be a time event, then don't mind stretching your legs for a long journey over. Please pay me if it's over the mass of the night winds. I'm sure things will take a turn for the better once you're here. Thanks, I'm counting on you. Hello, our evil boy of Natlin. I'm here. <sighs> once the traveler shows up, everything will get better. Hey, Aurora, over here! We are saving your Oh, Hey there, traveler and Paimon. What up, boy? So you were looking for us? We came as soon as we heard. You did? That makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Is this what happiness feels like? Yes. The heck? Where is this coming from? You are truly the best friends I could ask for. If my A vegetables man's best met friend? you, I'm sure they'd grow all the more lush for it. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, it's a compliment. I heard that complimenting people makes them happy. Did it work? Are you happy? Very much so, but what about you? You don't look too happy. It's that obvious, huh? Well, you're right. I feel like an aphid who can't find a flower. Granny is standing in my way. You miss a lot Yes. Granny's a genius, as you know. Geniuses often stand in the way of others, leading them to despair. And on top of that, I'm her grandson. Which means I get a double dose of despair. If that sounds serious, it's because it is. So please, help me deal with her. Oh, what happened exactly? You make it sound so dramatic. <sighs> I had to get you involved. Most people can't deal with Granny and... And I'm an exception. Exactly. You were the first person I thought of, Gramps. Gramps is what I called you when we first met. Why? I, I got told off for it, but... Please, I let mean, me I know. For calling you that one more time. I know I'm like over five years old, so it feels like that's fine. I guess. Unique about you, even Granny Seat Lolly treats you like you're someone special, and everything that's happened since we met suggests it's true. If I had a woven scroll that listed the 40 people who can deal with Granny Seat Lolly, your name would be at the top of that list. Wait, so who are these other 39? Also, the traveler. The rest of the list is just the traveler 39 more times. Hmm. You're fine, but I'm too young to be a grandparent. Uh, please, you've got to help me. This is really important. Although it looks like I'm just hanging around with nothing to do, inside, I'm distraught about the path ahead. Granny Seat Lolly is blocking my way and I can't get past. But now that you're here, I can start moving again before time runs out. Okay, so what do you need me to do? You know how much Granny loves to drink, nap, and read light novels, right? If you offer her what she wants, I'm sure you can lure her away. You mean, use those things as bait to distract her so she won't notice what you're up to? That's right. Don't worry, I won't make you do all the work. I've planned it all out, including what you need to say. All you need to do is walk up to her and tell her this. Dear Granny, I have the latest volume of Mirage Warriors here, along with the special edition spin-off of The Case Files of Miss Orith. Want to read them together? She'll pretend not to be interested for a few seconds, then think of an excuse to say yes. As long as you're the one doing the fishing, she'll definitely take the bait. Hmm, you really think I have that effect on her? He's just trying to butter you up. Even Paimon can tell. He's just saying whatever it takes to persuade you. No, I mean it. Granny might not say it out loud, but I can tell she has a soft spot for the traveler. If you say so. Paimon's still not convinced, but if all we have to do is say a few words to see Lolly, it's hardly putting us out. It's as easy as watering vegetables, and if my vegetables were here, they'd... Uh, sorry, there's no time for vegetable talk. Just trust me. Let me take you to her. With you here, everything will be better. If you say so, buddy. <clears throat> Value one, night wind letter. Okay, how many um, acts I gotta deal with, though, by the way? Because usually most of these, they're not that long, so I might just do the whole thing in one episode. They're not that far away, by the way, so let's jump down! Oh! Watch where you're going! Don't kill yourself! Goodness God! Alright, what's next? Huh? What's the matter? It's Granny. She's gone. She was standing there at the cave entrance to stop me from going in. Standing right in my way. Oh, you meant literally standing in your way. This 
whole time Paimon thought you were being metaphorical. Granny says it's tacky when light novels use contrived metaphors. I don't want to be tacky. Wait, but aren't you comparing yourself to a light novel? Isn't that kind of contrived? What? Oh, darn it. Anyway, let's see if the has been cleared. Yeah, see, Lolly probably figured there was no point standing in your way anymore. Aurora, whatever it is you so desperately need to do, you're now free to do it. I don't think it'll be that simple. Granny wouldn't release me from her grasp so easily. She might have laid a trap for me, or maybe when I get inside, I'll get caught by one of her surveillance spells. But why would she want to stop you? Yeah, let alone lay a trap for you. Unless... You haven't been up to no good again, have you? I just want to rescue someone, and Granny won't let me. Rescue someone? Oh no, what happened? Could I ask you to go inside and take a look at him? I think he should be safe for now, but he'll be at greater and greater risk as time goes by. But then, what are you going to do? I'll have to wait outside, or I might fall into one of Granny's traps. Uh, you mean you want us to fall into our traps instead? No, you'll be fine. Granny's traps will recognize it's the Traveler, so they'll leave you alone. Really? That's a goddamn thing? Sure it is. I mean, I've told my aphids all about your heroic deeds, so I assume Granny's told her traps too. Y you can't just assume that. Either way, I'm counting on you, Gramps. Well, sounds like someone's life is at stake, so we should probably head in and check things out. You said it's the opposite of what said dialogue, but whatever. Okay, now just go inside and be careful. With Chaska flying inside. Guess we just keep following this path? So this little boss fight? seems pretty confident that Lolly's traps won't harm us. But still, it can't hurt to be careful. Yeah, now about pipe on. Weehoo! Careful! Down. Save someone? He looks fine, unless I'm wrong about that. Excuse us, me! We made it in without a hitch. Maybe St. Lolly's traps can recognize us after all. Wait, look! There's someone there! Hi! Are you okay? Can you hear us? He's not responding. Is he asleep? Or sick? Do you think this is the guy Aurora was talking about? He looks like he's meditating. Also, what the heck's been going on here? Lots of strange and mysterious stuff around. It looks like some kind of ritual. Mm -hmm. No, there she is. Sorry, Granny. Look at Tula, she's already healed. <sighs> All grown up now, are we? I'm truly sorry. Now that you're one of the six heroes, you think you can do as you please, do you? Hmm? Well, explain yourself, you dummy. How exactly were you thinking of helping that spirit duffer? Come on! And, uh, hey, Seed Lally. Huh? Huh? Oh, when did you guys... Oh, drat. I wasn't expecting them. And now the Traveler probably caught me yelling at Auroron. Oh, this oh, is God. not a good look for me. She's becoming like, all. Oh, is it Yandria or Tuzan? I forgot what it is. She's acting like one of those. <laughs> Hello there, you two. We were just, um... Uh, Auroron and I were... We were... Uh... Play acting. You're you're bullshitting us. Okay, we saw that. You know, acting out some scenes from a light novel, quoting the lines. I didn't actually mean what I was saying, <laughs> right, Aurora? No. He's confused. Like, come on, <laughs> look at that huh? face. <laughs> uh, yes, that's right. Oh God, what is happening? I owe you an apology too, traveler. I asked you for help, but I forgot to watch my back, and Granny caught me. And now we're play acting. Uh, play acting, huh? Can I join? Traveler, come on, now's not the time for games. So what are you two up to exactly? Did something happen to this poor guy? Uh, yeah, Leela's his name. He got into some trouble during a clairvoyance session. Clairvoyance, you say? Uh, it's a kind of spell that lets your spirit leave your body, so you can access secret knowledge. You know what a medium is, right? You've probably come across them in novels. Anyway, it's similar to that. Leela's problem is his spirit has gotten lost and can't find its way back to his body. So in other words, his body's here, but his soul's gone? 
Well, technically the soul and the spirit aren't quite the same thing, but yes, in a nutshell, that's basically it. I just wanted to help bring Leela's spirit back. <sighs> and I wouldn't have stopped him if it was anyone else. But the issue is, Mr. Leela here is what we call a spirit duffer. What's a spirit duffer? Someone with no spiritual sensitivity whatsoever. Spirit duffers can't sense or control spirits, much less use spells on them. Now, there are certain methods that can force even spirit duffers into a clairvoyant state, but, well, I mean, <laughs> Look what happened to Mr. Leela. The spells of the Masters of the Nightwind are all based on dealing with spirits. And so are all our problem-solving methods. So for spirit duffers, even our healing methods don't work on them. So if they get into trouble trying to use a spell, there's basically nothing we can do. Yes, there is. As long as the soul is involved, I should be able to help. You hear that? No prizes for guessing what Auroron's bright idea was. Oh! because of your special constitution, right? But isn't that kind of risky for you? I'll be fine. Granny's just worrying too much. I'm feeling fine now, so I should be able to do it safely. Besides, it's probably our only hope of bringing Leela back. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. What oh, happens Lord. if it's not as safe as you're hoping, hmm? We both know you'll risk it all to try and rescue him anyway. Why do people hate her? Honestly, you're such an idiot sometimes. It's like you go back to hang out down again. Like, it's so stupid. Um, this is a tricky one. It's well, if you don't like the Yanni Kellers or Tazen how she is, that's your guys' problem. Not used to it, that's not my problem. I just love how she is, anyways. Why would I call her Baka? Uh. What? <laughs> Actually, I'm curious. What if, what if I call her an idiot? <laughs> Cause I, I'm gonna do it anyways. I'm with Lon. Slotty's own being a baka. Hey, that's Granny Eatsley to you. Who do you take me for? I obviously know how to handle this. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You do? Wait, really? You actually know a way to save him? Uh, yes. I mean, it's a crude solution. But that's beside the point. The point being, don't interfere when Granny's already got things under control. <sighs> anyway. Traveler, I was actually going to ask for your help on this. My plan will take quite a lot of work, and it's a little too much for one person. Oh, great! Well, it's a good thing Aurora brought us here, then. Sure, how can we help? I intend to use a two-pronged approach. The first is the crude method. Basically, it's looking for a needle in a haystack. See the thing I've drawn around Leela's body? That's a gateway to the Night Kingdom. Once the gateway is activated, all roaming spirits in the area will be drawn to it. If we're lucky, we'll find the one that belongs to Leela. I'll lend you some of my power like last time, so you can use my clairvoyance. It only works if you use this projection sensor first, though. So don't forget that step. Don't worry, this time nothing can go wrong. You'll just feel like you're in the Night Kingdom, and you'll see a lot of roaming spirits around you. All you need to do is gather them up. You can leave Auroron to sift through them and find Leela. Since he wants to help so bad, he can take the hardest job. What's the other approach? Draw him back, using what I know about the instincts of spirits. As we all know, clairvoyance is usually conducted with the goal of unraveling mysteries. If we can find out what mystery Leela wanted to learn the truth of, we can use that to draw his lost spirit back here. I'll do some clairvoyance of my own and channel it through Leela's body. That should give me some idea of what he was thinking. Oh, I don't think she gets it now. The first approach is like fishing with a net, and the second is like fishing with me. Just like how Aurora wanted us to lure you away with the promise of light novels. Um, your point would have been just as clear without the example, Paimon. Uh, what? I uh, don't think I won't revisit this later. But Granny, it's amazing that you can use a person as a clairvoyance medium. <laughs> I always give thought you him a had thumbs to use up. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't flatter your way out of this one. But give her a little shot. Okay, okay, I'll show Person without a spirit is just a physical shell, which, for our purposes, makes them an inanimate object. Traveler, just over there is my spirit loom, which will record the fragments I see during clairvoyance. Once I begin, please arrange them on a woven scroll for me. Let me know when you're ready. We should get to work. I I Gwenny! We got this, right? Gwenny is gonna 
What is the law about all days? Granny, do I have to do the hardest work? Did I say you have to do the fucking hard work? I, I, yes, yes. But just why me? Because you're my car. And secondly, you're a voice type. Ah, oh, fuck you then. Ah, oh, fuck you. What do you mean by that? I'm your gray. Don't make me to kick your dick. Move on, I'm going slowly. Are you ready? Don't worry. The spirit loom is very easy to use. All right, I'll give you a try. Hmm. I know this is your first time working with it, but I have a feeling you'll do great. Yeah, I fucked up. <laughs> like, you so do great, and I fucked up. Ooh, this is so different. Look at this. Place them in the air, display the order and position, and adjust the way to push into the lawyers. Uh, using overlap blocking and other methods to store the overall picture in the target states. Alright, so this is a puzzle method? Hmm. No, hold on, hold on. It doesn't look like that. I'm not placing. Okay, so this, um, that looks right. Not the neckline. Wait. Oh, that's the face. Never mind. I wasn't thinking about that. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Let me actually move. Let me place one like, over here. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I like that. I meant to do that earlier. Okay, this is a necklace. I'm looking at the picture too. Necklace. And the head whale. Looks complete. It looks white. Doesn't look white? Huh? Wait, hold up. Ain't this white? Wait, no, it's not. I think I'm gonna layer this. There you go. There you go. So how many we're doing, by the way? Oh, the woven scroll is ready. This looks like a person. Who is it? Uh huh? Hmm. It's Sanhaj Kampore. Huh? You mean that Sanhaj? Aurora's ancient name hero guy? That's right. He was not only one of the six heroes, but also a legendary border master of our tribe. Five hundred years on, and the remains of his spirit is still so strong. Border oh, Master yeah. is an honorable title, by the way. It's only given to powerful figures like Granny C. Lolly. No, not like me. The most powerful Border Masters can expand the borders of the Night Kingdom and temporarily manifest part of it in the real world. I'm no amateur with border spells, but San Hodge is in a league of his own. They say his Border Mastery was what turned the tide in the Battle of the Mare Javari 500 years ago. Legend has it. That Sun Hodge summoned a miniature Night Kingdom and exploded it to defeat the encroaching Dark Calamity. Whoa, he must have been really strong! Of course, it came at a great price. As far as I understand, both Sun Hodge and Tainoch, the leader of the Tribal Coalition forces, gave their lives to activate this spell. I don't know what Leela was thinking. Even I'd think twice before seeking out Sun Hodge Kampore during Clairvoyance. So what sort of spirit duffer in their right mind would... <sighs> uh, I guess folly is the greater part of bravery. Uh, I'm starting to feel like something else is at play here. I think I'll pay a visit to his house and see if I can find any clues. What about the other approach? Shall we keep that while we're gone? Yep, you You're can gone. keep gathering the roaming spirits. That won't be affected. Hopefully you do find Leela that way. Because it'll save us an awful lot of trouble. But before that, it looks like we now have another problem on our hands. Connecting with the spirit of San Hodge Kampore has caused quite a stir. I think we may have just spooked all the monsters in the area. A traveler, if you've got some time, could you go and get them to pipe down a bit? We don't want them to start attacking innocent bystanders. It's fine. I can handle that. No, you're staying right here, mister. But good, he enough to do already without coming to your rescue. All right, then. Sorry, traveler. Over to you, I guess. No problem. It's, it'll be a piece yeah, of cake. Don't sweat it. The most important thing right now is getting Leela's spirit back. <sighs> All right, I'm heading out. See you guys later. Okay. She gives a hug and says, Go bye bye. She just walks off. Okay, was that like part act one? That's what it looks like. Oh, look at that. 
all these things I see throughout the game? It gets me goosebumps every time. Huh, so where is the story quest? Is it called with a spike? See, oh, it was called? Nope, not that one. I was still waiting. Um, journey? Oh, yeah, the extras. Okay, let's do all for one episode. Extra P mode. Woohoo! From the Game Boys. Why not? So, anyways, now we're gonna. I mean, I'm already here, so. Hold on. I'm back. He's like, oh, uh, that's it? Okay. What's next? Are you. Say something, buddy? Oh, he's hey, thinking. Everyone. Oh, hey, we'll try about how <laughs> nice and uh, sexy you are. You're back. So, no good news for me then? You saw right through me. The Traveler collected a lot of spirits and I checked all of them one by one. None of them matches Leela's description. <sighs> I figured. It was written all over your face. It's alright. I didn't exactly have high hopes for the needle in a haystack approach anyway. Leela's condition is still stable, but we're not really getting anywhere. Well, luckily, I made some progress on my end. Leela's parents told me that he made a new friend recently, and apparently he's been out of the house for days at a time. On one occasion, they secretly followed him and saw him and his friend tinkering around with something at a camp. They saw his friend? Yeah, some guy who goes by the name Kokuchu, dressed in what looked like Inazuma attire. Is this really all I'll need, Mr. Kokuchu? Based on my studies of the ancient Oh my god, is that guy again? He is usually treated with desensitization therapy. So, I figure there's no reason it shouldn't work in reverse. Now, for a poor chap like yourself with no sensitivity to spirits whatsoever, you'll have to completely immerse yourself in spiritually rich substances for this to be effective. I'm electing to name this approach Hypersensitization therapy. Is it risky? You're the spirit duffer, not me. I'm sure you're more clued up than I am on the potential consequences of brute force clairvoyance. Ultimately, it's your decision. All right, but I do have one last question. What's in this for you? People like me obviously don't have much clout in this tribe, so... It's not like I can offer you much in return. You think I'm looking for a reward? Oh, my good sir, take a look at my face. Isn't the answer written here clear as day? Uh, what? What's written there? Just a friendly guy who's happy to help. What? Nah. So some random guy from Inazuma just felt like helping Leela cure his spirit deferness? Hypersensitization therapy, huh? What a novel idea. Could that really work? Not on Leela by the looks of things. <laughs> it's anything but novel. Our tribe used to offer it as a treatment once upon a time. But it was so fraught with risks and had such an abysmal success rate that it was eventually outlawed. As for this Kokuchu fellow, I'm sure he has his own agenda. He conveniently disappeared right after Leela got into this mess. Leela's parents gave me the address of the camp, so I went and checked it out. There were clear traces of spiritual energy. And also, look what I found. What's this? A broken shard. Probably from a weapon or some sort of ceremonial implement. You feel that? It might look old, but it has extremely strong traces of spiritual energy. Leela must have used this as his medium. It would definitely explain how a spirit duffer like him was able to trigger a clairvoyant experience. Yeah. Wait, there's something else. It feels so familiar. I think this is somehow connected to my ancient name. Connected how? Is it like a shard of an ancient name? No, more like... I think this item might have belonged to a previous bearer of my ancient name. Perhaps it was Sana? Uh, okay, that's it. Granny's getting itchy clairvoyance fingers. I'm going to try using this shard as a medium. Cool! Same as last time? The Traveler can use the Spirit Loom to record what you find on a woven scroll. Nope. Auroron can do the recording this time. Why? It's a safety measure. You have a better understanding of the spirit domain than the Traveler. That's true. If this really is a Sanhaj relic, 
You'll be better placed to deal with the fallout in the event that something goes wrong. Ah, see, Paimon? Told you Granny has a soft spot for the Traveler. Look at her not wanting to put him in danger. Oh, she might heal us. Meanwhile, I'm just a grandkid, so I'm expendable. That sounds like a... We won't talk shit, okay? Hey, what are you blabbing on about? Nothing! Uh, sorry, Granny. I'm ready now. Then let us begin. Okay, so this is the whole second cover session with the mysterious shot on our medium. All on follows the lead, using the spirit room to record the miniature see on the woman scroll. Soon, an image appeared. Alright? Alright, what's on the scroll this time? Um, looks like a broken bowl covered in flames. Hey, don't you think one of the pieces looks just like this shard? You're right! Top one, yeah, the middle. from the body of the bow. I saw a bow just like this in one of Granny's scrolls. Yes. It's the weapon San Hodge used in the Battle of the Marriage Ain't that cover too, from the bow I'm seeing? I guess that proves it. This shard is a bona fide San Hodge relic. Good old San Hodge. The relic's spiritual energy was fluctuating very strongly, but I wasn't in any danger at all. The Traveler probably would have been fine as well. Now that's a true hero, huh? Generations later and the stuff he used to own is helping to treat spirit duffers! I still think there's more to this story, though. Kokuchu must have had his own motives beyond just treating Leela's condition. Hmm... Well... Okay, we saw the full bow just now, right? Maybe he wanted to see it too, so he could track down the other pieces. I don't know if he'd have anything to gain by doing that. Even if they're San Hodge relics, I still doubt he'd have much use for a broken bow. Also, why use a spirit duffer in that case? You're basically setting yourself up for failure. <sighs> huh? Layla's body is responding! Let me take a look. I can sense a spirit being drawn to the relic. Looks like Granny's plan is working. Leela's spirit is being drawn to the bait. Why, in that case, let me try again. This time using both Leela's body and the shard as mediums. You can do it, Granny. I'm ready to go, too. I can control the spell room this time. <laughs> you got the itch, too, huh? Plus, a world one went last time. It's only fair to take it in turn. Mm, fine by me. We know it's safe now, so you shouldn't have any problems. Come on, give. Hmm. All right. If you insist, be my guest. Just let me know when you're ready. Alright, Granny. Okay, let's just take this off and talk to Slotty. You ready? Hell yeah! Let's All begin. All right. Here goes. All right. Give me a picture. Let's see what I got this time. Oh, a, p a map. Um, it looks like the blue one is first, from what I'm guessing. That's what it looks like. Place it down. The next layer, it looks like um, this one is next as well. And then the green points, it looks like it's next. I think this one is next too. I don't even know. Oh, perhaps both are next. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. The layers, oh, it took seconds this time. The first one, I was just newbie. Another image has appeared. This one is a map. A map? Of where? Could it be? Javari? The Mare Javari? <laughs> Palmer just Mare said it twice, that's hilarious. Mare Javari to a desolate wasteland after that big battle. Or rather, it became known as the Mare Javari after what happened there. The ashes of the monsters and warriors who fought there covered the entire battlefield. Sometimes, bone-chilling cries would be heard from the depths. Other times, the whole region would become engulfed in towering flames. Drowning out the cries. That place is full of untold dangers and mysteries. Over the centuries, the finest adventurers have tried to prove themselves by venturing in. Sadly, most ended up perishing there. That lasted up until around 20 or 30 years ago, when strange things started happening. People started speaking of an enormous dark creature the size of a mountain, roaming around inside the Mare Javari. And then, shortly after that, the whole region just completely disappeared. Nobody knows how, but that infamously ominous place just vanished from the face of the world. What? How the heck? I know, right? Anyway, if I'm not mistaken, the place indicated on this map is where it used to be before it disappeared. And where is that? At the westernmost part of Natlan. It's a very remote location, far away from any of the tribes. 
There never used to be a settlement there, but there's more people since the marriage of Ari disappeared. Anyway, that's just what I've heard. I've never been there myself. This is what age does to you. The older you get, the less adventurous you become. That's just an excuse. Granny's too lazy to take a trip that far away. Ooh! Oh, 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 Wake him up now. Not today. You might think bringing a spirit back into its body is like pouring water from one bottle into another, but it's far more complicated than that. I need to borrow a ceremonial sword and make some other preparations. It'll take me about two days, but don't worry. Now that his spirit's returned, there's just one step left. Let's meet up again in two days. Got it. Oh, right. So, next quest. Oh, wow, wow. You can't stop seeing her boobas. I mean, she is very pretty. I love that. Greetings again, everyone. Hello, Granny. See, Lily, you're here. I got the ceremonial sword from the chief. It has a certain power that's needed in situations like this. You haven't forgotten what we're doing today, right? Of course not. We're going to wake Leela up and then ask him just what the heck he was playing at. Uh -huh. And I've prepared the rest of the tools for the ceremony per Granny's instructions. We've dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's, so today should go off without a hitch. Good work, kiddo. Then without further ado, let's get started. Alright. Slowly summons a similar sword, so a copy of issue. I give offerings from the mystic smoke. That's if we Get saw by the way, oh shit. Night. A wreath of dreams in the swirling wind. Glory be to the ruler of death. Fade, fade, fade. Thrice uttered and thrice repeated. Whoa, is this one of her magic spells? This whole place suddenly got cold. What's happening? If I was looking back, my nips are hard. I don't mind that, Paimon. Keep your voice down. We mustn't disturb her. Yeah, Paimon, shut the fuck up. We, the children of the Priest King, Swear to abide by the ancient pact and tear through the veil of the night realm. I am Sidlali. Hear my command. I am the shepherd of doomsday. I am Akul Batil. <sighs> oh, look. Leela's spirit is back. It's coming towards his body. I shall pierce the cloak of night with flintstone and banish all souls that do not belong to the land of the dead. Leela, obey. My command and return to the land where the sun shines. Return to your own path. D did it work? Uh, huh? Where am I? And who are you? That's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Granny Eatsley. I mean, I priest to see Lolly. Please have mercy. Oh gosh. <laughs> She just gave him a dumb skill, like, oh no, he's definitely, she's deep behind me, isn't she? Yes, she is. Aw, oh, guilty conscience, huh? So, you know full well what you've done. Do you have any idea how close you were to never making it back? Or maybe you thought life would be more fun as an inanimate object. I, I'm sorry, I, I messed up, and I'll face the consequences. Oh, you sure about that? Then say goodbye to your parents. Tell them this. Goodbye, Mom and Dad. I've realized I enjoy life as an empty shell so much that I've decided to get Granny Eatsley to turn me into a stone statue so I can stand guard over her house for the next hundred years. No, no, please. Please don't. I'm begging you. I'll, I'll never do this again, I promise. Thank you, High Priestess Seelali. Thank you for rescuing me. <laughs> don't thank me. Thank my grandson. If he hadn't sensed something was amiss, I wouldn't have bothered getting involved. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You're more than welcome, Leela. And don't mind Granny. She's all bark and no bite. We're just glad that you're okay. Besides, someone tricked you into doing this, didn't they? That Kokchu guy. He's the real culprit here. No, Mr. Kokuchu had nothing to do with it. It was all my doing. Huh? 
Well, I mean, he suggested the method of using a powerful spirit relic as a medium, but it was my decision to go through with it. I wasn't coerced or anything. I'm sorry. I'm the one to blame. <laughs> the brainwashing is strong with this one. Um, so did Cockatoo provide the relic? He did. He said it was a treasure related to the Mayor Javari. Right, so that proves it. He was using you. He coaxed you into doing the clairvoyance for him. Exactly, Paimon. I'm a spirit duffer who can't cast a single spell. What use would I be to him? Guys like me couldn't sense a spirit even if we spent the rest of our lives sitting and meditating. But Mr. Kokachu said that if I brute force the spell and immerse myself in a spiritually rich substance, I might be able to catch a glimpse of one. It seems like my only option. Still, brute forcing a spell? Forever. I know, I'm sorry. It's just. Everyone in this tribe is so amazingly talented, and then. There's me. I just didn't want to be the odd one out anymore. I totally understand how you feel, Leela. Some seeds effortlessly grow into beautiful cabbages, while others struggle with all their might and never even sprout. Who knows why this is the way things are? Maybe that's just life. Life is full of things we can't change. I know saying this doesn't change anything either, but I hope it makes you feel a little better. Let's pause this discussion for now. We need to get you to Matla's for a checkup. Oh yeah. Okay, so now the- Wait, what about the soil? It's just floating over there. Okay, time to go to the doctor's. DOCTOR! Ah! Um, uh, anyways, uh, we need you help. Let's check your chin. Okay, looking good. It seems like this guy got off. Look like hey, pile of ass over here. Make sure he eats when you get back. Cool, he must be starving. That's a relief. I've heard of cases where people's bodies started necrotizing after they spent too long meditating. What a horrifying thought. Mm. Anyway, Leela, even though we didn't know each other before all this, I'm still really glad that you're okay now. Well, maybe you don't know me, but. I've heard all about you. The same goes for High Priestess Seat Lolly, the Traveler, and Paimon. I've heard all the stories. Huh? Even us? This might sound corny, but you're exactly Yo! the kind of people I've always dreamed of becoming. You say horny, but it's as in now. Well, corny sounds a little horny. Just wishful thinking. But honestly, why do I have to be born a spirit duffer? <laughs> nah, it's all right, really. I'm used to being useless by now. Thank you all for saving me. Auroron, I think you're right. It's just a fact of life. I promise I won't take another risk like this in the future. I've brought you more than enough trouble already. Aww, Leela. <laughs> it's okay. There's no need to comfort me. Uh, hey, you little rascal. What are you talking about? Look at me. Huh? What's wrong, High Priestess Seat Lolly? I said, look at me. Take a good hard look. Sense anything strange? Granny. What are you talking about? What do you think, Traveler? Another case of happy to help written on someone's face? Hold on. I think... What? Either my mind's playing tricks on me, or... Her entire body is an illusion. No, it must just be my imagination. I wouldn't be able to see through something like that. Wait, I know this trick. It's the same one I used a while back. Granny snuck away from right under our noses. You see? You can perceive some spiritual abnormalities now. Congratulations. R really But where are you going, Granny? Where do you think? I'm going fishing, you dummy. Someone <laughs> triggered the trap I set in the cave. Looks like our friend Kokuchu took the bait. What? Sorry, can't talk now. You'll find me in the cave. Oh, no! <laughs> Well, if I was gonna try to couple a group of boops, she's like, nope, I'm gone. So I can't touch them, never mind. So fishing is like, well, in the oh, in the cave, apparently. That's. She was tired the whole time. I don't believe it. He got away. Oh, this is terrible. Why'd I have to go and act so cocky about it? Oh, the sound effects are adding. Look like such a fool. I love the sound of her. A real escape artist or something. But I can't tell them that. I'll have to think of something else. See, Lolly, did you get it? Given that she's the only person here, I'm guessing no. I... 
I thought I'd let him go for now. But I like That's a lie! him. So if he comes around here again, I'll be able to track his every move. Oh, so Granny had only pretended to leave the cave when in fact she'd set up a whole trap for him and was lying in wait. Yeah. Oh, so just like how you caught Aurora. But how did you know Kokuchu would come here? Because I planted the bait here. The Mare Javari map and the bow shard left them both on the table. I had a feeling those were what he was truly after. And sure enough, my trap was triggered just moments after we left. So you really did set up traps here after all, huh? Of course. It's just that they'd never do anything to either of you. See? What did I tell you? So, Mr. Kokuchu, you used me after all. This whole time, all you wanted was to find the location of the Mare Javari. That's right. I've been wondering about the shard he left ever since I came across it. Why did he leave it there? The moment I confirmed the Mare Javari's location, that's when I realized. It was fate. He was counting on Leela's spirit getting lost, and the tribe coming to his rescue. Then, by helping Leela, we'd be helping him. Oh, so he was fishing too! It was all a ploy to lure in an actual clairvoyant who could look into the shard for him. Yep. And somebody fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I'm sorry. I took the bait, but so did Granny. Uh, the nerve! I only got involved because of you, you little scamp! Either way, Kokchu played us like a fiddle. Huh. He managed to accomplish his goals without taking any of the risk himself. You could say that again! Imagine if he tried to approach Sea Lolly directly. She'd have seen through him right away! Although, actually... See, Lolly, why did you let him go? Uh, because I couldn't risk using my full abilities here. You sure? He was a pretty slippery character. Slippery. And if I kept him here by force, there could have been unintended consequences. Was it my fault for picking a bad place? I'm sorry. I went looking for somewhere with a wealth of spiritual energy when I first decided to help Leela and ended up choosing this Mad Sage's hideout. Mad Sage? Yeah, he's napping right behind that wall. We'd have a whole new situation on our hands if we woke him up. That's why I decided against using my full abilities. I do have some good news, though. I snatched the shard and map back before he bolted, so I may have restrained myself, but I certainly didn't let him walk all over me. That's great! So we left empty-handed! Uh, uh, yes, left? Uh, sort of. The bad news is, he did get a look at the map before he left. Not that the Mare Javari's last known location is a huge secret, but still. Yeah, that's kind of worrying. What if he's got some sort of diabolical plan? Uh, don't worry, I'll keep tracking him. Also, Leela, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to give the shard and map to the Traveler as a gift. They might prove useful at some point in his journey. Absolutely. Th that's completely fine. The Traveler deserves it. I assure it's his very genius gift. Eh, uh, none of us are interested in them. And if there's any chance of them leading you to the Mare Javari, I'm sure an adventurer like you wouldn't want to pass on that opportunity. Granny Eatsley has a sense for these things. So, um, Granny Eatsley? Do you think I'm still a spirit duffer? What kind of a dumb question is that? You saw through my illusion, didn't you? I mean, that's partly because I deliberately made it imperfect, but even then, a spirit duffer wouldn't be able to see through that. Auroron, give this guy some lessons when you've got the time. Leela, put in the work, and we'll see how far you get. Amazing. Life is so full of surprises. As long as you keep moving forward, you might just run into some fertilizer in the middle of the road. I'm so happy for you, Leela. Let's both give this our best shot, and who knows? We might both be beautiful cabbages one day. What? Beautiful cabbages? Wait, hold up. Okay, that's done. Um, is there more to do, or is that pretty much it? Turns out I missed an uh, optional dialogue where I could find some log to try to stop her. I think that's what it was, because I was trying to find that before the end of the coding, but oh well. Oh, well, I'm gonna go there. Let's subscribe, I'll see you later. Sayonara.